What's going on guys? Welcome back to episode number six in this series on creating an MMORPG. I can't say brand new series anymore because it's like a week since I started it. But today's a little bit different because I'm not actually going to be doing any scripting. So I'm recording this intro at the beginning of the video, whereas usually I record the intro at the end so I can kind of show you guys what I did for the video. But in this case, I'm just gonna be going over what I did because uh, it's kind of difficult to work while the video is going. It's like, I always feel like a lot of pressure to get it done like quick. Uh, but let me go know what you guys actually prefer in the videos because I know that there's a couple different styles. There's me talking and actually, you know, explaining what I'm doing, or there's just me kind of like fast forwarding through what I'm working on and then kind of explaining it at the end. I would love to hear your suggestions. So just leave those down below and let me know what you guys prefer. And I can definitely cater to those suggestions. But as you can see, we've got some new stuff going on on our page here. And what I did was actually added the mining page back in as a test. And I know in the last video, at the end of the last video, I was having a problem with my animation module and it was something, I was something stupid like I knew it was. I just forgot to put the, the loop function that we needed inside of our loop so it wasn't actually looping our animation. So once I added that, the animation worked fine. And right now I actually have it all that stuff commented out because I was working on something else. So you'll see on our index.js now, I have our game module that's been there since the beginning with all of our functions that we had. And then I also added the mi mining module. So this is the module now that handles this uh, entire mining page right here. But I can show you the code that actually is making this stuff work. So if you wanna take a look at how the Ajax works, this is actually one aspect we're using jQuery for. So in this case, when we load, we have load or so we have an Ajax request being made here through jQuery. Yeah, so what we can do is actually look at the how this is actually working and how when you actually tap on one of these ores, it'll actually mine it for you and add it to your inventory and all that stuff. Um, I don't have the actual how it gets added to your inventory because that stuff all happens on the back end. But the idea here is that you have inside of your mining mod, I have a function that gets called when you first load the page to load your inventory from the back end. So this will you know, grab all of your inventory from the database and then it will um, display it here. And then I have a function that takes that result that we ret retrieve and basically just filters out the or. So we have a function written here for retrieve or, and that will basically grab all of the or that we need. And then we would use that or obviously to just figure out what the quantities were and then display those where it says zero here. So we have a couple functions for like our draw quantities and update quantity and stuff like that. And then we have one more Ajax call that gets made when you actually click on one of these. So when you tap on one, which it's not gonna work now, obviously, cause I said, the, the Ajax isn't actually hooked up right now. In this case, we have some stuff going on inside of this mine ore. So we send this Ajax request to mine the ore, passing in the ID of the ore that we want to mine. And then the idea is now we check the result. So we the back end lets us know whether they're, you know, it checks everything on the back end. So it's you can't really hack it. Like if you wanted to pass in a different ID or something, it's gonna verify all that stuff on the back end. And then it's going to make sure that the result from the request was true. So we check to see if it's one. And if it was true, then we say, we, we created a little message banner here. So I have a message banner that normally pops up. And what we're doing is we're just setting the message. So we say like, success, you collected this amount of this ore. And then we set the color to green. And then we create a particle effect, which I'll, figure out a way to actually get that working so I can demo that for you guys. Actually, yeah, I can do that for you guys right now because it's actually not that complicated. So if we wanted to, I could just comment out all of this stuff that's essentially handing or handling that Ajax request. So we're just calling the stuff that uh, gets set in here. Pretty much just what we could do now is just set a variable called act. So we'll get rid of this one. And this one is just going to hold some static data. So what we do is we say, we know that our act, the properties it needs is it needs a result, it needs a quantity, and it needs experience, because those are the three things that we're using. So if we just want to say that the result is one, the quantity is, let's say 20, 
and the um, experience, let's say, is you know 50. Okay, so we have those static variables now. So now if we actually just refresh this page and we click on one of these, you'll see now we get that particle effect and it says success, you gathered 20 coal. And uh, obviously the quantity didn't go up or anything because that's still part of our inventory that we didn't set up. But you can see you can click on any of these and it will load that, those and uh, send with our particle effect over there. But on the normal version, it would only do that, obviously, if it was successful. So normally what would happen is you would click on this, then your skill timer would reset. It would add to your quantity and your experience, and that would be it. But yeah, so that's super cool. And uh, yeah, I just have my create particles function open right here because the create particles is actually an, a module that I built in another video, and I can add a little card right here on the screen. So if you tap on that card, you could actually view that series too. Uh, I did, I, I made a series for this and it was actually, it was a super fun series because I actually had my face in all of the videos and I was in a different location for each one and it was like super fun to make that series. But yeah, this particle module is also available on GitHub. So I can actually post a link for that in the description too if you guys wanted to use this particle module. But in any case, that's kind of what we got, got going on right now. And so you'll see right now we have these ones that are locked. So basically what happens is this page gets drawn out with the JavaScript. So we have a draw function here and it looks kind of complicated, but basically what it's doing is just running through a loop of all the or and it's setting up all the HTML. And what it does is it's also checking the player's level against the required level for the mining, for mining that ore. And basically if it's locked, it'll just put the lock icon with the level on there. And if not, it'll show the ore and um, do that. And then I have a count variable being passed in that basically tells us how many of those ores are unlocked. So that when we add the listeners, we only add the ore listeners to the ones that are actually unlocked. So it'll just run through that count here and add the listeners to only the first ones that are actually been unlocked. And that's like the basic idea for now. I spent like a really long time this morning make, like working all the bugs out of the, uh, the main version that's actually uploaded because I had a lot of problems to fix and I actually changed a lot of the, the data structure. So we can take a look at, if we look at the index.html, you'll see that the structure is a little different now. Instead of just having you know global variables, I actually built a new module for the player that holds all of their variables for them. And then basically what happens is you have functions in here to deal with you know, getting the player's total level and resetting the skill timer. And then you have a bunch of things that get returned to you, which are just a bunch of getter and setter functions basically. So you can retrieve information and you can set information. And the reason this is better is just so that you don't, you know, you don't accidentally change things that you that shouldn't be changed. Like obviously the username and the potentially the user ID, you know, things that aren't going to get changed. You don't need to worry about any of that because you have uh, just the get methods here and you don't have any set methods. So I just spent a lot of time on that and getting all that new structure set up and uh, working with the new code that we have in here. So there's a bunch of new stuff going on. Like I said, if you guys have comments or suggestions on stuff that you'd like to see specifically for these videos, that helps me out a lot because otherwise I don't know what you guys want to see. So I end up just making videos like this where, you know, I'm kind of just going over what I've already done and I don't really know what you guys want to know about specifically. So definitely leave suggestions, comments below and let me know what you guys want to see for sure. I hope this video at least helped you guys kind of understand exactly what we're doing and how we actually structure the uh, code that we're working with here. And it helps you with your own projects so that you have a better idea of how you want to structure your own ideas when you start coding. Because structure is definitely very important and organization because you want to make sure that when you're coding, you actually have a lot of consideration for the future and what you're going to be doing, not necessarily what you're doing now, but things that you want to make sure you incorporate in the future. So when I set up my you know, data and stuff this way, it makes it a lot easier for you to understand and for you to use. So we have one module for the player and then you can access all the player's information through that. So it just makes more sense that way rather than just having uh, variables, global variables that you know, don't necessarily have any reference to the player. 
and we want to make sure that all these things are under that one object. All right, guys. Well, this is the end of the video. And like I said, I really want to hear from you guys, suggestions and whatever else you have. I know I've said that a bunch of times, but it's super important that you guys leave me comments and let me know so I know exactly what to tell you about. Be sure to like the video. That helps me out so much. Again, if you're enjoying this series and want to keep up with the content, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I will have my face on the screen right here for you to go ahead and click on that and subscribe to my channel. And I will see you guys in the next video.